In this video, I will walk you through free response question number one from the 2022 AP Calculus exam. This problem is considered calculator active, so we will use our graphing calculator as needed. This problem is primarily about the relationship between rate in and amount. In other words, this is about the first fundamental theorem of calculus. From 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., the rate at which vehicles arrive at a certain toll plaza is given by a of t equals this expression, where t is the number of hours after 5 a.m., and a of t is measured in vehicles per hour. Traffic is flowing smoothly at 5 a.m. with no vehicles waiting in line. Part A. Write but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the total number of vehicles that arrive at the toll plaza from 6 a.m. t equals 1 to 10 a.m. t equals 5. This is not part of my answer and I will erase this in a moment, but here are some notes that you need to know. The integral of a rate from a to b is equal to the change in the amount from a to b. This is one way of writing the first fundamental theorem of calculus. Since a of t is the rate at which vehicles arrive at the toll plaza, then the integral of a of t from 1 to 5 gives the number of vehicles that arrive at the toll plaza from t equals 1 hour to t equals 5 hours. And that's exactly what we were asked to find. So this is all you had to write for part a. Part b, find the average value of the rate in vehicles per hour at which the vehicles arrive at the toll plaza from 6 a.m. t equals 1 to 10 a.m. t equals 5. First, the notes. We have learned two formulas that involve the word average. One is average rate of change, which is given by this old school slope formula, f at b minus f at a divided by b minus a, basically y minus y over x minus x. The other is the average value, which I think of as the integral divided by the interval. So which one do we need in this case? They asked us to find the average value of the rate, so make sure you are using the average value formula. A of t is the rate at which vehicles arrive at the toll plaza, so this is the expression for the average value of the rate. 5 minus 1 is 4 and dividing by 4 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 fourth. This is calculator active, so let's put the equation for a of t into the calculator and evaluate. Looking back at the setup, here is the expression for a of t. So hit your y equals button and type in that expression as y1. So now we have this. Quit your way out to a blank screen and go ahead and type in 1 fourth. And for the integral, we do math 9. And we want the integral from 1 to 5 of a of t, which we just typed into y1. We can access that by hitting vars. By the way, you can type in the function right here. So you can type in 400 times square root of sine of 0.62t right now instead of doing what I'm doing and doing vars, y vars, function, y1. The reason why I am doing it this way is because I have a feeling we will need this function again for other parts of this FRQ and I don't want to have to type in the function over and over again. So by typing it in to y1, I can just refer back to it without retyping it. Anyway, just hit enter. Kabam! 375.537 if you round up, or 536 if you truncate. So that's it for part B. Part C is the rate at which vehicles arrive at the toll plaza at 6 a.m., t equals 1, increasing or decreasing. Give a reason for your answer. Looking at the graphical relationship between f, f prime, and f double prime, we see that a will be increasing when a prime is positive, and a will be decreasing when a prime is negative. 
So our strategy will be to evaluate a prime at 1. A positive tells us that a is increasing at t equals 1, and a negative tells us that a is decreasing at t equals 1. This problem is calculator active, so let's use our graphing calculator to evaluate a prime at 1. From a blank screen, hit math 8 for the derivative. So we are taking the derivative of function a, because that's a prime. But we typed function a into y1. So we can hit vars, y vars, hit enter, and choose y1. If you prefer, you can type in the whole function manually right here instead of y1. And we want to evaluate at x equals 1. And hit enter. So that's it. 148.947. Write this down. Since they gave us units in this problem, I'm going to include units right here as well. Remember that this is a rate of change of a rate. That's why it is in vehicles per hour per hour. What matters is that this is positive, which means that A is increasing at t equals 1. Let's write it up. A of t is increasing at 6 a.m. t equals 1 because A prime at 1 is positive. Now I think that was a full credit answer, but if you want to be extra careful and thorough, you might say A of t, the rate at which vehicles enter the toll plaza, is increasing at 6 a.m. t equals 1 because a prime at 1 is greater than 0. Part D. A line forms whenever a of t is greater than or equal to 400. The number of vehicles in line at time t for the interval from a to 4 is given by n of t equals the integral from a to t of a of x minus 400 dx, where a is the time when a line first begins to form. To the nearest whole number, find the greatest number of vehicles in line at the toll plaza in the time interval from A to 4. Justify your answer. Okay, that was a lot of words. Let's break it down. We are given this function n, which tells us the number of cars in line for times between A and 4. And then they are asking us to find the greatest number of cars in line on the interval from a to 4. So when they ask us to find the greatest number of vehicles on an interval, what do you think we're going to do? Hopefully you just shouted out, use a candidates test, because that's how we find the absolute max or the absolute min on an interval. Before we get started, we need to figure out what a is. We are told that A is the time when a line first begins to form, but we are also told that a line forms whenever A of t is greater than or equal to 400. So let's use our graphing calculator to find the first time when A of t is greater than or equal to 400, and that will be the value of A. Before I click over to the calculator, let's think about what the window should be. So a has to be something greater than 0. So we will let x min be 0. But we are talking about the interval from a to 4. So let's let x max be 4. So hit the window button and change x min to 0 and x max to 4. Um, we can just leave y min at negative 10. But uh, for y max, Remember, we are talking about values of a that are greater than or equal to 400. So that's a really big number. So we need to let y max be something significantly higher than 400. I'm going to try 500 and see how that goes. A lot of kids run into trouble because they just leave their window at uh, negative 10 to positive 10, and then they hit graph and they don't see anything and they think their calculator is not working. But uh, you have to remember to adjust your window to appropriate numbers for the problem that you're looking at. Anyway, let's hit graph and see what we've got. This looks pretty good because I can see the top of this arc. We need to figure out 
where a of t first is greater than or equal to 400. So let's put in a horizontal line at 400. Go back to y equals, go down to y2, and just type in 400. Hit graph again. So we can see that a of t is first equal to 400 right here. So let's use the intersection function. Second trace 5 move close to the point of intersection and hit enter 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 1.469 we may need this again later so let's store this into letter a so quit out of here and hit x and then store and then choose letter a record this in your work we now know that A is 1.469, etc. We understand that A really has many more decimals than this, and we have stored them into letter A. Our goal is to make a candidates test. And the first step of making the candidates test is to find the critical values of N. So that means we need to figure out where N prime is equal to zero. The common case of the second fundamental theorem of calculus tells us how to take the derivative of an integral defined function when the lower limit is just a constant and the upper limit is just a single variable. Basically, the derivative of the integral is just the function on the inside. So the derivative of n will just be this function on the inside. So if I want to know where n prime is equal to zero, I need to find where a of x minus 400 is equal to 0. Adding 400 to both sides, that means I need to find where a of x is equal to 400. But that's exactly what we were looking at on the graph. So here is a of x in blue, and this red line is a value of 400. We already found one value where a of x is 400, that was a, but here is another value where a of x is equal to 400. Let's find that and call it b. So second trace, intersect, slide on over to that second intersection point, and hit enter, enter, enter. 3.598 if you round up. Actually, let's immediately store this into letter B. So quit your way out of here and hit X and store and alpha B. Now record this in your work. First, let me make one small correction here. When you use the second fundamental theorem of calculus and take this function on the inside, you are supposed to replace this x with the t. So I shouldn't have x's here. These should be t's. So the critical values are t equals 3.598 and t equals 1.469. Now that last one is the value of a that we found earlier. Let's call the other one b just to make it easier to write when we make the candidates test in a moment. For the candidates test, we will evaluate n of t at the endpoints a and 4 and the critical value, which we called b. Remember, we are just plugging in these three values one by one in for t right here. So first we have the integral from a to a of a of x minus 400 dx, but we know that the integral from a to a is automatically going to be zero because the area under the curve between a number and itself is nothing. There's no space between a and a. Next, we need to find the integral from a to b of a of x minus 400. So just hit math nine, and we want to integrate from a to b. And we are integrating a of x minus 400, but 
we have typed a of x into y1. So we will hit vars, y vars, enter for function, and choose y1. You can probably see by now why I keep using this y1 instead of typing in the original function manually, because this would be the fourth time I would have had to type it in. So this is much quicker. Anyway, so this is a of x minus 400. Kabam! And rather than put 71.254, I'm just going to put 71 because they said to the nearest whole number. Finally, we need to find the integral from a to 4 of a of x minus 400. By the way, notice this work that I'm showing. I'm showing the setup. This is all part of my justification. So we are integrating, uh, so math 9, from a to 4. And one more time, vars, y vars, enter, y1, minus 400. So we will put 62. So the greatest number of vehicles is 71 at time B, which is 3.598 hours. Let's write that up. The greatest number of vehicles in line at the toll plaza is 71 at t equals 3.598 hours. See candidates test.